So at work, we use Slack, and oftentimes in Slack, I like to use a GIF image to add some color and humor to the conversation. And my normal workflow for that would be jumping over to my reaction GIFs folder, and then just dragging and dropping something into Slack, which works, but a lot of times, uh, the processing time takes longer than would be uh, effective from a humor standpoint. So my thought was, what if I could take this folder, which is kind of hard to navigate and find the things that I want, and turn it into a simple Angular site that I could host on Netlify. And that way, instead of having to, for example, uh, drag and drop images into Slack and then get them uploaded and processed, which you can see here is taking a couple of seconds, uh, I'd be able to just link directly to an image. So what I ended up creating was this Ben's Reaction GIFs site on Netlify, and it's just a list of GIFs, and you can see they each have been tagged for me to allow uh, some searching, so I could say like WAT, and here would be my WAT-related GIFs, and you can see that they're static thumbnails at first, and then when I roll over, the GIF image downloads and renders, which can take a few seconds here because again, some of these images are larger. And then the idea would be, I just click on this, the image is copied to my clipboard, and then I'd be able to jump over into Slack and paste it. Now, unfortunately, this didn't quite work as I would have hoped, and you can see here that uh, because the GIF that I'm linking to is four megabytes, it doesn't auto expand. I can of course click on it to expand it manually, uh, but that feels like the GIF equivalent of having to explain why a joke is funny, which of course counteracts the whole intention of the joke. So ultimately this was a failed experiment, but it was still a fun experiment to build, so I thought it'd be still worth showing how it works. Um, so there are GIFs, obviously, and then there are these static images, and the static images are being generated by the sharp Node.js package. That's the first time I've ever used Sharp, so that was pretty fun. So the first challenge that I had here was figuring out how to use Sharp and how to generate these thumbnails. Because this is hosted on Netlify, it's a static site, I'm just generating the thumbnails locally in my development environment and then committing them to the repository, which I can then host on Netlify. So let's jump over into the code and start looking at how this works. So I have a GIFs directory and I have a thumbnails directory. And this is going to be an incremental build, meaning that I'm going to be adding GIFs over time. So I want to essentially diff the GIFs directory and the thumbnails directory and only generate the thumbnails that don't yet exist. So we're going to jump over into the generate thumbnails for GIF. And what we can see here is that I'm reading in that inputs directory. I'm getting each file and I'm generating the thumbnail file version, which is essentially just replacing the GIF file extension with a JPEG file extension. And then I say, if the file exists, I'm going to skip over it, right? Because I don't need to generate the thumbnails more than once. They're going to be in the code repository that are going to exist over the long period. If they don't exist, I'm going to use the sharp library to read in the file paths, flatten the GIF into a static image, save it as a JPEG quality 70% compression, and then just output it to a file. And that's all there is to it. Sharp ends up being super easy to use, super fast, and uh, I know we've used it at work a couple of times. I've never used it personally, so this was my first look at it. Now to run this, I'm actually running it as a NPM script. So you can see here I have my images, which runs NPM run thumbnails, followed by NPM run thumbnails done. The thumbnails one you can see here is just calling that thumbnails JS script, which we're just looking at through Node. So that's gonna use Sharp, it's gonna generate the thumbnails, and then afterwards, it's gonna call this npm thumbnails done, which is really just fun. And you can see I'm using the say command to uh, pipe this thumbnails have been generated phrase through Fiona's voice. So the say command just comes bundled with Mac OS. Um, I, have, I guess it's probably for some sort of assistive technology. I have no idea, honestly, uh, but it's just fun to use. But now I can jump over into my CLI and run npm run images and it will run all the images. You can see they've all been skipped because they've all already been generated, and then you can see it runs, say, Fiona thumbnails have been generated. I'm not recording my system output, so you probably couldn't hear anything, but uh, please accept the fact that there was suddenly a lovely voice that said, thumbnails have been generated. Fiona's, I think, a Scottish voice. Um, 
Okay, so once I had my thumbnails generated, I then had to create a manifest of all the GIFs because it wasn't just that I wanted the list of file names, I also wanted to be able to tag them. That's obviously a manual process. So I created this manifest TS file for TypeScript. Uh, it's going to be consumed by my Angular app, which is also TypeScript. And you can see it's just a very simple collection of uh, file names, alt text, and then arbitrary tags. And those are the things that are showing up in the site here. You can see here's the alt text. It's also an alt text on the image, which for some reason doesn't show up when I mouse over. Um, and then here are my individual tags. N none of these are interactive. This, if I click anywhere within this, you can see that the URL gets copied for the individual image. So again, manual, but I intended to grow the collection of GIFs over time, so this would be very incremental. Therefore, the manual aspect of it didn't seem too challenging. Now, once I have my manifests, all I had to do was pull it in, in my app component, and I'm gonna then take that manifest and map it into a collection of search items uh, with the entry embedded within it. And the reason that I'm wrapping the manifest inside of a secondary collection is simply because I'm gonna be able to mutate the is visible and do things like compile the search targets down into a single field, uh, sort it, and the sorting is random. So you can see that every time I refresh, let me get to the top. Every time I refresh, we start out with different images. And that's again just because, you know, these are supposed to be fun and I want to be able to uh, refresh my mental model for the GIFs that I have internally. Um, the, uh, let's jump down to just generating, compiling the search items. Uh, I have my image URL, my thumb, thumbnail URL, uh, my search target. So that's when I, when I go to filter, that's what it's searching on. That is the combination of the file name, the alt text, and then the spreaded tags into this collection. I'm mapping it to normalize each value, then I'm joining it into a new line delimited string. So essentially this becomes a single string that contains all of these values, which I can now search against in a single uh, contains operation, right? String.contains, um, which you'll see when I go to apply the filter, uh, I'm normalizing the input filter from the user. That's this field here. And then I'm looping over it. Oh, sorry, it includes, not contains. I guess contains is for arrays. Um, I'm saying that search target includes the search query. And again, that search target contains all of the string-based values associated with the image. Uh, so it's a very simple idea, um, but it allows me to say happy or celebrate, or just uh, say diminish. Anyway, it was fun. Ultimately, it didn't really work again because if we look at the Slack, um, let's grab the other one here. Good luck with that. Again, oh, two megabytes is too large. I thought there was a three megabyte limit. Anyway, uh, again, not having this auto expanded automatically really takes away from the effectiveness of having a GIF image in the chat, obviously. Um, so I would say chalking this up as a learning experiment and, uh, and um, yeah, just fun to build. I love Angular. And now that uh, I know how to use Sharp, that's pretty exciting as well. Um, one thing that is interesting here is if I hit uh, Command F, oops, Command F, what you'll see is that this input gets focused, right? So if I click out and then I hit Command F, my input gets focused there. Uh, and, and that's one of the really cool things about Angular. If we look at the HTML template for this, so here's my search filter with the filter ref right here. And what you can see is I'm binding a key down event to the window from within my input. And the key down event that I'm binding is the meta F, which will be the command F on the Mac OS. So I'm binding to the global command F operation. I'm taking that event, I'm preventing the default, so I'm gonna prevent the browser from using the native search, and then I'm focusing and selecting my filter ref, which is why, again, if I click out, and then I click there, you can see it's already focused and selected, and now I can do complement, for example. Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, the rest of this is super simple. It's just some simple HTML. Uh, I'm wrapping up my GIF inside this BN GIF component just to keep things a little bit more encapsulated. The GIF component 
itself doesn't really do anything except contain this image source tag, which will uh, default to the thumbnail URL until you um, mouse enter, at which point it activates. And the activation is just setting that source to the image URL as opposed to the thumbnail URL. So when you mouse leave, we go back to the thumbnail URL. The HTML for this uh, GIF is super simple. It's just the image. Again, we have the dynamic source so that it can be the thumbnail first and then the GIF once you mouse over. And the rest of it is just simple uh, Angular directives. Very, very little going on. Uh, the most exciting part of this whole thing is probably this uh, Sharp.js package, which I'm using to generate the thumbnails. And then, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really the most exciting part of this. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't work, uh, or it didn't achieve the effect that I wanted it to achieve. But uh, it was fun to build nonetheless, so hopefully there was something of interest in here uh, for you all.